Hello. So this video is going to be a bit different from previous videos probably. It's a bit less action and a bit more talking. So I've decided to not put any music on top of it. So if you want to add in your own instrumentals, feel free to cue some up now. Uh, maybe I'll leave a playlist in the description. So recently I went to the south coast of England with some of my friends for like a little beachside holiday. Since we were all photographers, we kind of made a decision to not bring much equipment with us to kind of like relax and switch off for a bit but I thought that was a bit too far to not bring anything so I went shopping for the whole group and I went to the photographer's gallery in London and I went on a bit of a pillage and bought nearly every disposable camera that they stock which is a surprising amount so we ended up with seven different disposable cameras all with Varying abilities, films, and sp special powers. I don't know, they didn't have any special powers. And I dispersed them out amongst the group for everyone to take their own spin on the area that we're in and the holiday. Since there was six of us shooting at the same time, it was pretty hard to actually go out and document the people taking the photos. We were all pretty preoccupied. So, there's not much footage of the actual action. So instead, everyone's gonna present their images as a little presentation and just talk about their experiences and what they thought about the cameras and the photos that they produced instead of like a walking around over the shoulder behind the scenes kind of thing. So I guess I'll go first. And actually, I was lucky and got to shoot two different cameras because one of them I'd already shot half of on a different trip. So that one only had like 10 photos. So the other one, which was purchased for the event specifically, was the Kodak daytime camera. I don't know if it was called daytime, but basically it didn't have a flash. And there was a few bonuses that came with this. It meant it was much smaller and much more pocket size, which if that's something you're into, that's great. Personally, I think I probably would have rather had the flash. But another bonus was that it came with 39 exposures. I think most of the other cameras were 20 something. So this was a pretty big bonus and really good value for money. Since it doesn't have a flash, there's really not much thought that can go behind the photos other than just pointing at things and pressing the button. There's absolutely no settings, there's nothing you can change, you just gotta do it. And I think some of them actually came out really nice, like there's nothing special about the lens. It's just like a standard disposable, but when you get it right, when the lighting's nice, it can produce some really nice results and they kind of form these nice snapshots of the trip. I think the colors came out really nice. It's really quite pleasing. But yeah, there's not really any downsides to it. I just think I would have had more fun if it had a flash. However, the second camera that I used was a lot more fun and interesting. So this was Lomography's disposable camera, which did have a flash, and not only did it have a flash, it also had three sets of gels on it, which were yellow, blue, and purple. And you can actually use them by themselves, not use them at all, or you can combine them to make stronger colors. So for the most part, I combined the yellow and the purple one to make kind of strong red, and this worked really cool. So to make most use of the flash and make the, the gel most prominent, I had to wait until it was darker. So my main idea was to wait until dusk, and to try and take photos of like foliage when, so basically to try and illuminate the foreground to the same amount as the sky. So I was trying to wait until there was a nice sunset and then kind of build up this even exposure. But when you can't really choose the power of the flash, you have to do a bit of guesswork. But thankfully it actually worked, I'm quite impressed. Um, it gave some really cool results and I think these photos, I mean, they're not something that I'd normally do, but I think it's something that would be really fun to experiment with. And changing like lighting effects is something that I never really play with. And I think there's definitely a lot to do there. I'm probably actually gonna pick up another one of these disposables soon because it, it's just a fun thing to have around. I mean, it's not hassle to carry around and the results can be really cool if you put a bit of thought behind them. So I'd definitely recommend this one. And next, I'm gonna pass you over to one of the other guests who was present, which is Jack, who was shooting the Kodak Fun Saver. I was kind of thinking I didn't really want to take photos that much. And so what I did instead was I would pose myself as if I was photographing myself, but give the camera to 
passers by in the street and I'd let them photograph me. So really, you've ended up with a lovely holiday snap documentation of the, the lovely town of Rye. Yeah, I think so. I was kind of, um, you know, it's a, it's a contemporary twist on uh, <laughs> the holiday vernacular. Um, but no, I, I thought I'd photograph myself in front of uh, monuments and uh, sightseeing tours. And uh, yeah, just just getting a variety of different people that live and work in Rye to photograph me instead of me photographing them. You know, I just thought I thought it would be more interesting to see because I often photograph people and I orchestrate them to a certain degree to stand and, and present themselves in a certain way. I thought it would be a little bit more interesting to kind of turn the tables and I would pose like I was uh, a subject of mine and then have someone else photograph me just to feel or you know experience how uncomfortable that is and yeah it's it's interesting people's compositions are interesting yeah, like not it's kind of one is I, the same every single photo is actually quite different and i quite like that it's kind of um testament to like maybe it's like photographic styles but i'm so used to having people in the center of the frame in my pictures that um yeah i just you know it was just a bit of tongue and cheek and fun i mean personally my favorite one is in the telephone box um, because then you can also see the person photographing me. And what I tried to do, although I, I, I bottled it a couple of times, was I wanted to photograph people photographing me. Um, and so I managed that a couple of times. But it was just, yeah, I know it was just, it was just a bit of a bit of fun. And also I got to steal uh, Kian's ice cream for one of the photographs, and I had a, I had a few, <laughs> I had a few licks of it. Well, without him knowing. <laughs> so I got a free ice cream. I got a free ice cream out of it. Yeah, I mean, I think maybe it's worth even changing career paths. Like, you, you've got a really good pose. I should be a professional tourist. I would uh, ask you, like, something about uh, the disposable camera, as I'm sure people <laughs> who watch this are, like, kind of wondering which one maybe they should buy for their holiday. But you didn't actually take any photos with it, really. <laughs> so. I think it's a testament to the fact that it doesn't really matter what disposable camera you have because like they all kind of produce you know similar results I think but it's kind of like it's just what you photo it's just having one is I think the most important well, I, I also think it's like the, this proves that the concept outweighs the the camera in those parts like this is this wouldn't matter what it was taken on it would always be funny I think so, but also I think you, I think you're being very generous with your praise <laughs> of me. For sure, I don't think yeah, it's yeah. going to be in just, a gallery, just... but I think it's pretty funny. <laughs> it's, pretty it's actually a really good way of, like, I was thinking about it on the drive home that it would be a good exercise for people that aren't used to talking to people or asking people to, if they can take their portrait, is to get other people to take their portraits for them first. Yeah. and then that's yeah. kind of the same. You get kind of the same feeling. But no, it was just a. I mean, I look forward to when it's in MoMA and the Tate Modern. I'm now joined with Charlie. So, uh, what camera did you use? Hello. Uh, yes, I am Charlie, and I use the Ilford HP5 camera, which I actually only chose because Kian had already stolen the underwater camera, which I was really excited about using. But I, I thought, I never shoot black and white, ever, so I wanted to go a little bit out of my comfort zone and do that. And I was pleased because Liam was really annoyed with me for taking the black and white camera. Just like I'd been annoyed with Kian for taking the underwater one. A wonderful circle. Oh, choose my weapon. Well, I think we know which one I'm getting, don't we? Yeah. Oh, oh, Kian's got it. Sorry, hey, you've done yeah. me, Kian. <laughs> well, I never shoot black and white, so I'll shoot black and white, just to make yeah. Oh, do you want it? <laughs> no, well, get fucked. You know, someone took my camera. I've been looking forward to using that, man. Oh. Now I'm looking forward to using it. I haven't shot a disposable camera since I was about 17. While I was shooting it, I had made a decision not to worry too much about doing anything exciting. That I just wanted to document what we got up to and if I saw anything fun, just take a photo of it. Which is what I did and while I was shooting I thought these are probably gonna, not going to be interesting or fun photos. But when I saw them I, re I really liked them. They put a smile on my face. I thought some of the compositions are quite interesting and they made me really happy. I always document travels and adventures with friends but the, the nostalgic quality of these because of the black and white and because of the light leak which is normally yeah. things I don't like really changed my view. Some of them could be a proper like olden holiday 
the British seaside. <laughs> Just put the yeah, date yeah, next to it then... and pretend it's some other time. <laughs> yeah, and the, the contrast is really nice. The light's really nice in, in a lot of them. I, I really like the way it's rendered a lot of the scenes. Yeah. Do you have any idea why there's a light leak? Do, it seems to be in the same place every frame. Yeah, well, no, I don't. Um, I thought I had taken good care of it. That is I a bit of a worrying to... factor, I guess. This was one of the yes. more premium disposables. And really? Yeah, I think it was one of the most expensive. But I think that's because the film inside of it's better. But mm -hmm. if the build... Like, it looks one of the nicest, I think. But if the build quality mm -hmm. is that bad that mm -hmm. this happens, that might put some people off. It probably got a few knocks, but not that I was aware of. Um, and, I, it, you know, like I said to you, near the end of the trip, there's something weird about yeah, it. Like, it parts of the bodywork were kind of poking out. Yeah, so I'm sure it was probably my fault. Mm, I don't think it ruined um, any of the photos, though. Not ruined. I mean, there's a couple of the beach scenes. The, the one where you're kind of standing in the puddle in the distance, um, and another couple of the kind of more, much wider shots with very small subjects, the contrast is a lot lower in those photos than I expect it may have been otherwise without the light link. Um, uh, I, I still don't think it ruins them. It, it's reduced the quality quite drastically, but kind of like it. You mentioned, for me to mention, some of my favourite photos... Um, a couple of the lads have said they like the one of Reggie doing a wee. <laughs> I like that one. I, I like the composition, but I really like the, the photo of Kian with the towel blowing in the wind. Yeah, I, uh, I, I really like the photo of Liam uh, on Aslan's back. Um, that one's just funny, though. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I like it's the actually, composition it's actually as well. Quite a good like, composition, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like the reflections of Kian and Jack in that one as well. But I think for me, like... The, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Yeah. I think a um, lot of it, there are, some people might not love them as much as you because they weren't at the holiday. But I will say, I, as, a, as a second party, yeah. I also feel that way, but I was there as well. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, more, no. it's, like, it's not like attached to you, it's more like, it's more a, a, a bonus to, like the reason to do it on your own trips yeah. is like for your own enjoyment more than anything else. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. I think that probably the only photo that anyone would find interesting is the one of Reggie peeing, and it's, there's nothing inherently interesting about it on a conceptual level, but it's just a fun composition. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it, and I, I would definitely, you know, if I, like, go on holiday with my friends, I would definitely want to do something like that, buy a disposable for everyone. I thought it was a great way to document it. Great. Well, thanks, Charlie. Thanks, George. We are now joined with our next guest which is Kian. So uh, what did you use? I used the underwater camera, the Fuji. I had a lot of competition for it. Everyone seemed to want to use it. It was cool, I enjoyed it. It had a few like interesting features, like a little uh, wristband so it didn't get lost, and like a really massive shutter so you could feel the camera when you're in the water. Yeah. It was definitely like the most premium product out of all of them. Yeah, had definitely. the most thought behind it. I decided to use it in the sea because it was waterproof and it felt like a waste if I didn't. What do you think of the images? Are you happy? Yeah, they. I think some of them turned out quite good. It was interesting because you don't normally have the freedom that a camera like that gives you. So whenever you're like in the water, obviously you're scared of your camera getting wet. So it was nice to be able to just kind of play around with it and, and have fun and not worry about it getting damaged. And like, I think that, I mean like a disposable anyway is always like relatively bad quality. Yeah, and exactly. it's more about like the emotion of a photo or whatever you could say. Yeah, um, yeah. And <laughs> yeah. I think like is some of these photos have even more kind of of that because there's water on the lens. It's like even accentuated the lo-fi aspect even further. Yeah, and that's yeah, like actually sure. come out really nicely. Yeah, we were talking about this before, saying that like you don't get a disposable because you want to take the proper pictures you get it because you don't want to have to worry about like equipment and stuff getting in the way. Like I always find if I try and take the sort of pictures I'd take with like a big camera, I end up being disappointed and feeling as though I should have just taken them on like a medium format or something. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just a camera you have for like fun, I guess. And there was, were there any downsides to this camera? Didn't have a flash. Uh, so like I guess that could be a negative. Um, it, I mean it's kind of, I think one of the problems is like we're in England and the water's like really 
murky and you can't really see any, anything so I couldn't really make full advantage of it and take like pictures underneath the water and stuff like that like I've used a dip, like a Kodak one before when I was in Spain and it was like really clear water and that was like fun to kind of swim around and take stuff underneath but I guess that's not the camera's fault. So yeah, would, would you recommend this camera to someone else? Would you use it again? Yes. Or Yeah definitely. Yeah I'd use it again. It was fun. I thought it was like the way it was designed was well done and um, for something which was like a disposable I was kind of impressed by like how well thought through it was. So yeah I definitely recommend it and use it again. Cool. I think that's it. Sweet. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Hello, I am now here with Aslan. So Hello. what did you shoot? I'm Aslan and I shot the classic uh, Fuji uh, disposable. So I've got mixed feelings about it. I think by far the biggest positive is the viewfinder. I remember the viewfinder being super big and super clear. Uh, I think that's quite like an issue a lot of the time with disposables and point and shoots in general. I mean, uh, any camera that sort of like form factor, uh, there's a tendency for the viewfinder to be like really crappy, which obviously makes it kind of difficult to get the shot that you want. But um, I think that's the thing that stood out to me the most with the Fuji was that the, uh, the viewfinder was really, really good. If, you ever, if you're shooting somewhere where it's like a bit tight or it's a bit more difficult to see, I'd recommend getting the Fuji. The other positives are that it uses a classic uh, Fuji film stock. I think it's, uh, is it C200? I imagine so. Maybe that um, or X, extra. Or... It's got the classic Fuji uh, color science on there. Uh, it renders the greens and the blues super well. So I took a lot of pictures that included the sky. The sky came out like a really beautiful blue um, and all the grass and stuff just, rend just rendered really nicely. To, uh, from a color point of view. I wasn't particularly impressed with the with the metering on the camera. I think it had a real tendency to underexpose. So that's obviously something you gotta bear in mind. Uh, maybe you could push that in the scan, you know, whoever's scanning, you can ask them to scan a little bit lighter. But uh, I did find that it did over, like underexpose quite a lot. Does it even say. have a meter? Does it not just like take everything at F8 and a certain shutter speed? Oh, does it? Oh, okay, well. When you're outside in bright sunlight, it looks great. The colors look yeah. amazing. So yeah. to, to, to me, those are like the two big benefits is the viewfinder and the color. So downside, like I said, it kind of, uh, I feel like a lot of the images were darker than I would like to, for them to have been. And I also managed to get my finger in a lot of the pictures. <laughs> um, I don't know if that's just me personally doing that, but uh, I haven't really had that much trouble in the past. Sometimes when I use my uh, T4, I get a lot of my fingers and shots, uh, but not with other point and shoots and not with other disposables. So I don't know whether that's something to do with the way the camera's structured or whatever. You can complain all you want about a disposable camera. I, like the points that I'm making are completely negated when you take into account like how much the, it, it costs to buy a camera and a roll of film. Like it's very cheap. So there's gonna be obvious downsides to that. And the whole point of the point and shoot like experience, the disposable experience isn't to obsess over the smaller details like perhaps I am, I was at the beginning. It's just to, you know, see something and go for it and shoot it. And I think the, the Fuji does really well with that. Like the viewfinder makes that just super easy. Like when you see something, you look through the viewfinder, it's easy to like hone in on that and just press the show. Just embrace it, em embrace the limitations um, and embrace the fun of it. Hello, so we're now joined with our final guest, which is Liam, and thankfully, he's here in person. So, take it away. Hello, so I was given the Agfa Le Box camera, which I wasn't particularly pleased about, because I don't like Agfa. Uh, I really hate the film, and I don't think you can get remotely usable results out of it, in my opinion. So, in kind of protest, I didn't actually take many images at all. What I did take was very Tumblr-esque, flash on, skies, etc. When you say in protest, did you mean you only took four photos? I did indeed, only take four photos. So, in review of the <laughs> four images I took, it is as bad as I expected. However, if you're after that very classic point-and-shoot perspective, that very 90s lo-fi look, definitely works for yeah, that. I mean, you can get really blogs on time yeah, with this camera. Yeah, for sure. There's a thousand notes right there, you know, that's, 
That's the, the, the tumbler clout, some would say. The, the camera was nothing to write home about. Felt like a point and shoot, disposable, weight like a point and shoot. Had this weird thing where the flash actually came out like a, like a stick. And it was like a sharp object sticking out the side. That would be my only kind of issue with the camera itself, other than its existence. All in all, I had fun because I was on holiday. Would I recommend the Agfa La Box? No, no I would not. You could buy yourself a very nice roll of film and put it in a very cheap camera and you might get good results. Or there are many, many more disposable cameras, particularly the Ilford HP5 disposable I wanted to shoot with. I would choose that. Long live Agfa Vussy. Congratulations if you made it this far into the video. Uh, thank you very much for sitting through this extreme length of time of us talking about disposable cameras. That's quite an accomplishment. So uh, congratulations to you. Hopefully you enjoyed it and it wasn't a waste of time. And uh, hopefully there'll be a more normal video coming very soon. So see you then.